Joyful parenting coaching. When we give our kids responsibility, responsibility in the home, we give them a way to feel connected and important in the flow of the home. So today I wanted to brainstorm with you 10 ways in which asking our kids to take responsibility for something, a kind of hashtag adulting responsibility, elevates their self-esteem and elevates their sense of importance and being needed in their family. So number one, have your kids make the dinner reservations. Yes, I know we can use the app to do it. When we have our children phone and actually speak to a real human being, that's a high risk uh, activity for a teen. And when we ask our children to do high risk activities, we are meeting their need for that. The teenage brain is designed for risk. And so we want them to feel that little bit of adrenaline that goes like, what? I don't want to talk to a stranger. How can I do that? Now when they call and they say, you know, do you have a table available at seven o'clock for five people? They're having to connect to an actual adult. Number two, have your kids drop off and then pick up the dry cleaning or some other equivalent, right? They're having to go, they're having to have your credit card, they're having to explain what it is that they need, they're having to ascertain that, yes, this is what I need, this is the right set of clothes, and to bring it out. Again, this is just a chore for you, but for them, it's something adults do, and now you're asking them to do it and that has power. Number three, in the same way, mailing packages feels important, right? We love to get packages, and in the holiday seasons, we usually send a lot of packages. This gives you a great opportunity to ask your child to please go in to the, ba uh, to the post office and to, to do, do that for you. And it usually involves forms, and it involves the uh, postmaster saying, you know, is there anything flammable, liquid, da, 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 da. And even if you've assured your child that there isn't, that question is going to bring a moment of panic. Like, oh, somebody's questioning me here. That's a great kind of panic for them to feel. That's an adrenaline building. Oh, I got through this kind of panic. Number four, have your children go and pay the library fines. It's embarrassing to have a late fine. You have to go to the adult, you have to say how much, you have to do it. That's good, that's a good kind of embarrassment. It's very small, it's manageable, and yet it's like, okay, I took responsibility for the fact that my books were late. Here's the money. Number five, have your child return an unwanted garment, right? It still has the tags on, you still have a receipt. The return should be super easy, Make sure you do it at a place that has a clear return policy. All they're doing it. I find that when you ask a child to go talk to customer service, they are so afraid that the child, that the customer service person is going to say, no, it's too late to return. No, you can't do this. Or no, you've already worn it. That just that little bit of interaction with your tween and your teen of going like, I have the receipt. Look, it has its tags. It hasn't been worn. It's just the wrong size. I need to return this, right? For us, very easy, but that nice first step of being clear and standing up for yourself. Up the ante a little bit. Number six, have them return a garment that has some flaw. Like maybe you got home and you found that there was a, a hole in the armpit and um, you would really like to exchange the shirt with the armpit, still has its tags, still you have a receipt, the 30 days haven't gone by. You would like to return the garment because you'd like to have a shirt that does not have a hole, right? Again, this provide, requires a certain amount of clarity, a certain amount of fortitude to talk to an adult like this. Number seven, this one can be done from home. Have your children research activities that the whole family could do on your next family vacation. Or research where they should stop for 
meals. If you're going to do a road trip on Thanksgiving, for example, have them research where they're going to stop for meals on uh, Thanksgiving. Number, number eight. I'm up to number eight, right? Number eight. Um, up the ante. Give them a budget. Ask your child to find a hotel room and to make the reservation. Now, that can usually be done without talking to anybody. You can usually do it all online. And if they've never done it before, you may need to guide the steps. At the same time, let their decision stay. So, Let's say that they get to a room and they're all happy because they've saved you money. And you get to the room and, you know, maybe the bathroom doesn't seem like perfectly sparkly, sanitary, clean. Or maybe, you know, the sheets aren't the crispest. And now they have to kind of feel that. It's okay, right? You praise them for the job they did. You reassure them that, yeah, this kind of stuff is hard to know. And brainstorm, maybe, you know, did you check Yelp reviews? Did you, did you, did you check online reviews? Does, did the place have good reviews? Was it worth it? You saved some money. And this is especially a kind of a fun one to do if you say, here's the budget for the hotel room. If you come in under budget, you may keep the difference between the budget and the actual amount. That may mean that you end up in a cheaper hotel room than you would normally be. And then everybody has to suffer the consequences of it. That's an awesome adult learning task, right? Like, ooh, okay, I want to save money on the one hand. On the other hand, I don't really enjoy the experience. Like the money wasn't worth it when I go in and I feel like the bathroom really could be a little bit shinier and cleaner and, and makes me wonder. Okay, uh, number nine, have your kids design and execute on the holiday decorations. And this doesn't mean that you make them do all the work. You can still be there. You can still, you know, you can say, okay, where do you want this to go? What goes next? You can be the laborer, but what a grown up adulting thing to do, right? To get to decide which corner is the best corner um, for the Christmas tree. Where do we want to put this wreath? Is this a front door wreath or a back door wreath? Which wreath do we want to use? And again, you can have a budget for it or not have a budget for it. You can make them use stuff that there's already in the home. Um, but to just hand that over. And if you are a control freak and if you're a person who takes a great deal of pride in what your home looks like in the holiday and you now ask them to do this, Oh, what a source of pride that is for them, right? Like, mom trusted me with this. I got to do this. And of course, it might not be up to your standards. Find something to praise. Find something to be pleased with. Give them that moment of pride and satisfaction. And number 10, have your child contribute something to the family meal. There's something that they can cook or bake or experiment with. And of course, you can have backups ready if you want it. But what a wonderful thing to be able to bring out the pumpkin pie and to say, my son made this pie. Look, isn't it beautiful? I trust you're not going to have guests at your dining room table for a holiday who are going to notice if the pie hasn't set 100%, if it's a little runny if maybe the crust really isn't flaky, but how to feel important and connected with your child when um, you're celebrating, doing a family activity, right? That says you are a part of this family. We need you. You're important. You are appreciated. And we see and thank you for what you have contributed. Okay. That was 10 ways to give your children responsibility where they'll feel that they are adulting. Much better that they adult by mailing a package or having a conversation with a customer service rep than that they adult by trying drugs or alcohol or uh, sending topless pictures on their phone. Joyful Parenting Coaching, Elizabeth Stitt.